so I was saying that as I stand here today, right in front of you all, you see me as this young woman from South Asia. If you have gone through my bio, you would see me as Momal Mushtaq from Pakistan. You see me as someone who's able to communicate well in English. But you don't know the number of hours I've put in, standing in front of the mirror, rehearsing my speech over and over again. You don't know the number of English movies that I've watched with the sole intention of improving my English. You don't know that my father worked hard all his life, day in, day out, to provide us with the best possible education, because that's a luxury he couldn't afford for himself. And he's still working, even though he's retired. You don't know that my mother doesn't really have a life other than to look after us, to cook meals, to wash dishes, clean clothes, seven days a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year. So as I stand here today, right in front of you all, you know my name. You know where I come from, but you don't know my story. And now that I look back, and try to put myself in my own shoes 10 years ago at my grandparents' place watching my first cousins fight over a bag of sugar. One thing, that one thing that changed my life, that one thing that made all the difference is technology. I use the technology to educate myself. I still remember those days when I would be sitting in front of the computer screen, visiting my father's office, because that's where we had a personal computer, and teaching myself. Teaching myself how to change screensavers, or type in Word, or draw in paint. And then I got exposed to the world of internet. That was a world of possibilities for me. I used the internet to reach out to the world, and I used these skills to create an impact in whatever capacity I could. Because I love Pakistan. That's where I was born. That's where I grew up to be who I am today. And Pakistan is a beautiful country. It's a country filled with beautiful people. So I use the technology to reach out, to learn, um, to reach out to the world and use those skills. And I remember I would spend hours in front of the computer screen um, teaching myself how to do, how to uh, code. I learned, I taught myself HTML, hypertext markup language. I taught myself CSS, cascading style sheets. And I learned to blog. I learned to create websites. And my parents were scared. She's spending so many hours in front of the computer screen. Um, she might be having an internet affair or, she, you know, watching inappropriate stuff. Um, but it's, but as I told you, I had always wanted to create an impact. And I was using these skills to create an impact in whatever capacity I could. And then it's my understanding of the world that helped me achieve it. Three years ago, for the first time in my life, I traveled abroad. For the first time in my life, I had the opportunity to live in Germany for some time in Munster. And that was a great experience for me. I don't know how to put that into words because I had never been away from home. And doing my own grocery, um, doing my own laundry, it all sounded very exciting. But one thing, one thing that I cherished the most while I was here, one thing that I knew I couldn't have back at home was being able to roam around freely. Because in Pakistan, wherever I went, be it the store, the university, or the shopping mall, I was escorted by a male back and forth the venue. It could be my father, my brother, or my husband. I don't have one yet, but once I do, he would be taking me to places. But in Germany, I wouldn't say that this part of the world doesn't have its problems. It does. But in Germany, nobody would stare at me. Nobody would pass nasty comments as I walked by. Nobody harassed me on the streets. I remember um, sometimes sitting on a train and just enjoying the ride because it felt so empowering. With no particular destination in mind, I would sit on a train and enjoy the ride. I attempted to buy cafe to Munster, some 35 kilometers to be exact. And in the end, I just felt like I'd grown wings on my feet. 
And there is no way no one could ever stop me. For the first time in my life, I felt I could be free. That feeling was short-lived because I had to go back home and I had to live in that very same society. And I had this huge reverse cultural shock and it began to hurt me more than ever to realize that as Pakistan burns down with a huge number of problems, from poverty, corruption, extremism to what and what not, almost half of its population, the female population, it sits back at home, not because they want to, but because they don't have a choice. I could not stand it any further. I had to do something. And surprisingly, there's not even any law against women's mobility. It's just the social customs and traditions that have plagued the society. And that's not the situation in Pakistan. In Saudi Arabia, women are forbidden from driving a car. They can ride a bicycle, but for that, they must wear a full body abaya, be accompanied by a male relative, and stay within certain limits. In India, road safety rules do not apply to women, as if they're not even a part of traffic, as if they're not even human. So I decided to work on the cause of women's right to mobility. How I decided to do that? By coming up with the idea of the Freedom Traveler. Um, the Freedom Traveler is an online platform which connects and empowers female travelers. I feel like in order to empower women, they must be able to move. And free, uh, the Freedom Traveler does exactly that. I decided to use that same very technology that changed my life to change the lives of many other girls around me. How does it do that? Well, it provides them with a platform where women can map the experiences of travel. I feel like when one woman would be strong enough to share her story on a local, national, or international level, other women would be encouraged to follow suit. That one story will give birth to other to many other stories, causing a gradual societal change. And women would also be able to reach out to other women to seek help and guidance. And in the end, one woman just does not represent one woman. It represents the whole household. And it's not just a matter of human rights. I feel by empowering more women to be free and independent, that would have an immediate impact on national economies to job creation and labor mobility. So it's a very important thing. It's a very important cause that needs awareness. Sadly, there's not even enough awareness about it. If I talk about my own self three years ago, I wouldn't even know that that's a problem because I'd never experienced what it means to be free. It's only when I went out of my shell, out of my comfort zone, I felt what it meant to be free, how empowering it could be for a woman. And then women who have the freedom of movement they don't even know that there are women out there stuck inside the four walls of their houses. So it's very important to increase awareness regarding this cause, and I want to do exactly that. And during this process, I want to help many other girls around me. Finally, I would like to say that freedom is something that you can talk about as much as you want to, like I did right here just now. It's something you can think about or see on the television screen or listen to on radio. But if you haven't actually experienced it, you can't feel the true essence of it. I want to help every woman experience what it really means to be free. And well, that's my story. I did not share it with you today to gain sympathy or to raise or to inspire you. I shared it with you because according to my friend Alex Jeffrey, being vulnerable is like being naked. It makes your life easier because there is nothing left to hide anymore. I'm sharing my story with you today because I want to fully accept it. I want to own it myself. Thanks for helping me do that.